Well, I think the way that you understand spasticity in Brazil is the way it's understood around the world, and the problem with that worldwide understanding is that it's unclear. Um, I've been studying the issue of spasticity to understand its relevance in cerebral palsy for decades. I have been looking for the definition that makes sense or that explains it, and I've discovered that most of the clinicians in the world think that the definition that was provided by J.W. Lance in 1980, that spasticity is a velocity-dependent resistance to stretch, that it's muscle tone that, causes, that the stretch reflex causes the uh, velocity-dependent resistance to stretch, that when you pull on a muscle quickly, it reacts uh, by contracting, that somehow that is spasticity. And the problem with that is that that theory that that is spasticity has never been validated since 1980. But it's not understood, so that means that everybody went along with the theory because it was easier to go along with the theory than it was to actually pursue the issue any further. I've been pursuing it further. And I will tell you that I've found up to 27 authors who cannot put together the idea that when you pull on muscle and it reacts with a contraction, that that idea has anything to do with movement disorder, particularly in cerebral palsy, also in stroke. Uh, it's not substantiated, and I'm sorry that it's so accepted, because it is an issue or a definition or a concept that actually is not supported by the sciences. And in the meantime, as a therapist, I have never considered spasticity, thought about it, tried to treat it, tried to reduce it. I've really tried to improve body alignment, improve the base of support, and I've seen enormous changes happen in my children that you might call spasticity reducing. I would call them pastoral control. It's finally understanding how to use your body. So I tell you that um, the issue of spasticity is poorly supported by the sciences, and yet physicians have been treating spasticity for decades, since 1980, thinking that it's the problem. And the problem with treating spasticity as if it's the problem is that if it's not the problem, they're really not getting very good results. Selective dorsal rhizotomy, long-term results are quite poor. Mm -hmm. uh, Botox, long-term results after six months, very poor. Um, that surgery, lots of issues around surgery later on that mean that they didn't improve your child's function or improve his strength. They just maybe kept him at the same level or worse. All of these issues that are, are, are set strategies that are used to intervene to treat spasticity for children with cerebral palsy are usually destructive. They break something, they hurt something, they cut something, they poison tissues, and the Botox itself is actually causing scarring in the tissues mm -hmm. that doesn't seem to go away. The selective dorsal rhizotomy is a permanent cutting of sensory nerves, and the thing that child with cerebral palsy needs the most is good sensation. Uh, so I stand strongly against spasticity interventions because, number one, spasticity isn't clearly understood. Number two, it's never been described to cause anything like a deformity or a movement disorder. It's just a concept. And number three, we have better ways, better ways to help your child.